Good morning and good evening. Welcome to the Sea Limited First Quarter 2022 Results Conference Call. All participants will be in listen-only mode. Should you need assistance, please signal conference specialist by pressing the star key followed by zero. After today's presentation, there will be an opportunity to ask questions. Please note this event is being recorded. I would now like to turn the conference over to Ms. Minju Song. Please go ahead. Thank you. And hello, everyone, and welcome to CE's um, 2022 first quarter earnings conference call. I'm Minju Song from CE's Group Chief Corporate Officer's Office. Before we continue, I would like to remind you that we may make forward-looking statements which are inherently subject to risks and uncertainties and may not be realized in the future for various reasons as stated in our press release. Also, this call includes the discussion of certain non-GAAP financial measures such as adjusted EBITDA and net loss excluding share-based compensation. We believe these measures can enhance our investors' understanding of the actual cash flows of our major businesses when used as a complement to our GAAP disclosures. For a discussion of the use of non-GAAP financial measures and reconciliation with the closest GAAP measures, please refer to the section on non-GAAP financial measures in our press release. I have with me C's Chairman and Group Chief Executive Officer Forrest Lee, Group Chief Financial Officer Tony Ho, and Group Chief Corporate Officer Yan Jun Wang. Our management will share strategy and business updates, operating highlights, and financial performance for the first quarter of 2022. This will be followed by a Q&A session in which we welcome any questions you have. With that, let me turn the call over to Forrest. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining today's call. I'm pleased to share that we have made a strong start to 2022. We recorded solid results across our business in the first quarter of 2022, despite challenging comparisons to the same period last year during heightened COVID-related restrictions. As a result, we are well on track to achieve our previously shared projections of profitability in our Asia markets while continuing to scale our businesses and capture market share globally. During the fourth quarter, our group gap revenue grew 64% year on year to reach $2.9 billion, and we generated gross profit of $1.2 billion, an increase of 81% year on year. Shopee and C Money continued to enjoy operating leverage and efficiency gains as they scale and strengthen their market leadership position. In particular, Shopee's adjusted EBITDA loss per order before allocation of HQ costs in Southeast Asia and Taiwan improved by more than 70% year on year to four cents. This shows that Shopee is well on track to achieve positive adjusted EBITDA before allocation of HQ costs in the region. In addition, we currently expect Shopee to achieve positive adjusted EBITDA even after allocation of HQ cost at the end of next year for this region. At the same time, Shopee enjoyed very strong growth, even against the tough comparisons last year. Its gross orders grew more than 70% year on year, and the gas marketplace revenue increased by more than 75% year on year. Further extending Shopee's market leadership, both in terms of transaction volume and commercialization capability. In money's adjusted EBITDA loss also narrowed both quarter on quarter and year on year, while gap revenue grew close to 350% compared to last year. Quarterly active users grew more than 78% year on year. This is also a strong indication of C money be on track to achieve positive cash flow as we previously projected, while at the same time continuing to scale rapidly with efficiency. With the significant scale, strong leadership, and the clear synergies achieved by Shopee and C Money in Southeast Asia and Taiwan, our consumer internet ecosystem in the region is naturally approaching a stage of long-term profitable growth. While Verena experienced headwinds in its growth post-COVID, we saw some preliminary positive effects from our efforts to improve user engagement in Free Fire. In particular, the monthly user trends for Free Fire began to show some early signs of stabilizing toward the end of the fourth quarter. We are assessing the long-term trends in user engagement 
post-COVID to better tailor our strategy and areas of focus. Building ever more engaging content within Free Fire and strengthening our pipeline of new games remain our key priority. In the past two years, we successfully navigated the major uncertainties brought by the pandemic to capture the significant growth opportunities presented to us across all businesses. As we enter a new period, we recognize that the current micro trends and uncertainties could affect our region and the world in the near to mid term. The experiences, capabilities, resources, and further strengthened leadership positions we managed to accumulate and achieve during the past period have put us in a stronger than ever position to navigate such uncertainties, and more importantly, capture opportunities that may also arise in our region. As always, we will continue to focus on being humble, pragmatic, and agile, while consistently driving strong execution in serving the large underserved communities in our region. With that, let me now discuss each business individually. In the first quarter, Shopee continued to significantly improve its unit economics while capturing market share and extending its leadership position across our markets. Online consumption continued to grow on our Shopee platform resulting in strong year-on-year -year growth. Shopee's debt revenue was $1.5 billion, up 64% year-on-year in the fourth quarter. And the gross orders grew 71% from last year to reach $1.9 billion. GMV was $17.4 billion, an increase of 39% year-on-year, and growing at a 58% CAGR from the first quarter of 2020 before the pandemic. Monetization also saw improvement with gap marketplace revenue as a percentage of total GMV rising to 7.2% during the quarter compared to 5.7% last year. It was great to see that Shopee's gross profit margin improved year on year due to the faster growth of transaction-based fees and advertising income, which had higher profit margin compared to revenue generated from other value-added services. At the same time, gross profit margin of revenue generated from other value-added services also improved quarter on quarter. Moreover, we continue to be highly focused on efficiency. Here, I would like to share a bit more on our approach to continually improving cost efficiency. Our business model optimizes for unit economics through growing operating leverage across our e-commerce ecosystem with scale. We invest in growing a broad base of buyers and sellers across comprehensive core online marketplace categories and deepening engagement. This promotes user growth, conversion, and the retention as well as purchase frequencies, which allows us to efficiently grow order volume and density. With sufficient and continually improving order volume and density, we aim to achieve cost leadership for our ecosystem to profitably serve the broadest base of buyers and sellers, as well as the largest range of consumption categories. This also allows us to efficiently cross-sell more products and service offerings, including digital financial services, especially to the underserved mass market. A market segment which we believe represents the largest opportunity in our global markets. We believe this strategy drives significant scale, strong profitability, and deep competitive modes in the long run. Our track record in Southeast Asia and Taiwan is approving the success of this model, and our convictions have only further grown with what we have achieved in Brazil within a short period of time. I'm pleased to note that thanks to our focus on enhancing monetization and op optimizing costs, 
we have once again recorded significant improvement in unit economics in the first quarter. And just the EBITDA loss per order before HQ costs improved both year on year and quarter on quarter for Shopee overall. In Southeast Asia and Taiwan, adjusted EBITDA loss per order before allocation of HQ costs was four cents. An improvement <clears throat> from 12 cents in the first quarter of 2021. We also made very healthy progress in Brazil in the first quarter where such loss was $1.52, an improvement of more than 45% year on year. Our efforts on expanding the total addressable market across our key markets are reflected in Shopee continuing to be ranked highly on key engagement metrics among global peers. Include data.ai, Shopee ranked the first in the shopping category globally by downloads in the first quarter. Shopee also ranked the first globally by total time spent in ads, and the second by average monthly active users in the shopping category on Google Play in the first quarter. <coughs> Meanwhile, Shopee was the top ranked app in the shopping category across both iOS and Google Play by average monthly active users and the total time spending app in each of Southeast Asia and Taiwan, based on data.ai. In Indonesia, we were also ranked the number one app across these same metrics, with gross orders up around 77% year-on-year during the first quarter. In Brazil, Shopee ranked the first by downloads and the total time spending app, and the second by average monthly active users for the shopping category according to data.ai. In March and April, Shopee Brazil had the highest number of monthly active users in the shopping category as we further extended our leading position. We are also growing our local sellers with over 2 million Brazilian sellers registered on the Shopee platform currently. They range from SMEs to established brands and we are working across the board to enable them to serve more buyers across more categories, demographics, and the consumption locations. Our positive traction in Brazil to date underlines our belief that there is a large and highly promising opportunity to serve underserved communities of sellers and buyers in that market. We continue to invest behind this opportunity while delivering more value to our sellers and buyers. Moreover, across our core market, Shopping Mall has continued to power the way forward for our brand partners with innovative solutions and tools to support sustained growth. In the recent quarter, our more than 36,000 brand partners saw strong growth momentum and reached new milestones, according for around 15% of GMV compared to 12% a year ago. We have also onboarded more brand partners such as Kills in Singapore, as well as Kate Spade and Mark Jacobs in Thailand. Looking ahead, our position is stronger than ever before. Across our four markets, real and sustained e-commerce penetration is expected to continue. At the same time, we are extending our leadership and reaching big even in Southeast Asia and Taiwan. And just two years after entering Brazil, the world's sixth largest market by population, we are making rapid progress towards market leadership. We therefore remain focused on high quality execution alongside consistent innovation and investments in our tech capabilities to provide a differentiated experience to our users. This will further enhance our competitive strength and improve efficiency to best position Shopee for long-term growth and profitability. Meanwhile, given the current environment of elevated micro uncertainty, we now see a wider range of scenarios and outcomes for Shopee this year. While we believe 
that our previous guidance is still achievable, we are revising our e-commerce guidance to correspondingly reflect our expectations around the upcoming macro uncertainties. We now expect e-commerce gap revenue to be between $8.5 billion and $9.1 billion, representing 72% year-on-year growth at the deep point of the guidance. Let us turn to digital entertainment. As reflected last quarter, we have seen softening in user base and booking compared to the lockdown period during the pandemic, which was further impacted by free fire continuing to be unavailable across app stores in India. However, despite the pullback from acceleration we saw during the pandemic, when we put our first quarter results into perspective, our quarterly active users have shown strong growth with a figure of almost 24% from the first quarter of 2020. Our view regarding Verena and FreePower being a long-term platform for digital consumption remains unchanged. Therefore, we remain focused on attracting, returning, and deepening engagement with our users through investing in enhanced and diversified content, UGC tools, improved accessibility, and other user-friendly features. This investment, alongside with the lower bookings, has led to a year-on-year -year decline in adjusted EBITDA as a percent of bookings for this quarter. But we will continue to take a long-term view on such investments as they are critical for the sustainability and the diversification of our key gaming franchises and platforms. Moreover, as we navigate this phase of moderation, we are focused on user-based stabilization. We saw some preliminary signs that this is starting to bear fruit with the monthly user trend for free fire beginning to show some early signs of stabilizing towards the end of the first quarter. While these are encouraging signs, the longer-term impact of reopening around online gaming and free fire specifically remains to be seen, and we will continue to focus on user engagement and user-based stabilization. We are also very pleased to see that free fire continues to be one of the most popular games across the world as we continue to focus on high quality content and ensuring that Free Fire is accessible to and enjoyable for our large player base. Indeed, according to data.ai, Free Fire remains the number one most downloaded mobile game globally in the first quarter. The game also ranked third globally by average monthly active users for all mobile games on Google Play during the same period. Our vision of building Free Fire into a long-term gaming franchise and platform remains an ongoing strategy. We are focused on innovating around and investing in Free Fire across more user engagement content and events. Free Fire's recent partnership with BTS, one of the most popular K-pop groups globally, is a success, where we work closely with the artists to design new eye-catching items, costumes, and actions that has resonate well with players and fans alike. Videos featuring BTS artists and the content on our social media channels reached over 150 million views. Additionally, Craftland, our map editor feature, saw strong traction through driving greater engagement and interaction across creators and gamers in our community. In the first quarter, hundreds of millions of gamers played new maps on Craftland across billions of games. User-generated content is a growing key part of Free Fire's ongoing engagement strategy, and we plan to continue improving and extending the Craftland experience. As shared before, Digital entertainment is a key long-term focus of our business with increasing importance of virtual consumption from the rising digital native generations. We are committed 
to investing behind our existing top tier franchises while further diversifying our portfolio of games across more new genres. An example is Moonlight Blade, a third party massively multiplayer online role playing game, which will be launching across both mobile and PC in Thailand in the coming months after an earlier launch last year in Taiwan. Our developers have been working on new games across a wide variety of genres. At the same time, we are exploring publishing partnerships and making early investments in game studios across the world. Our digital financial services business. C-Money continues its strong growth into the first quarter of 2022. We remain focused on driving the adoption of our products and services in a thoughtful and disciplined way while leveraging the multiple synergies across our Shopee and the C-Money ecosystem. Gap revenue for the quarter was $236 million, up 360% year on year. Quarterly active users across our C-Money products and services grew 78% year on year to reach 49 million. Adoption of C-Money financial products and services across credit and digital banking were key drivers of revenue growth during the quarter, and we expect this to continue. As we optimize our models and expand our partnerships with financial institutions, these products are expected to be solid and high quality value drivers in the long run without the need for significant investment to scale. The total payment volume of our mobile wallet was $5.1 billion in the first quarter, an increase of 49% year on year. Over the past few years, we have successfully leveraged the Shopee ecosystem to build leading mobile wallet positions across our markets. We have also expanded our credit products across more markets accessible to more white-listed users. Our credit portfolio currently serves both consumers and merchants across a variety of products. Our digital banking initiatives saw strong early traction as well. On a related note, I'm proud to share that our application for a digital bank license in Malaysia together with YTL Digital Capital was approved in April. In Indonesia, which has the most comprehensive set of products and services among our markets, over 30% of the quarterly active users have used multiple C-Money products or services in the first quarter. The size of the opportunity for C-Money is massive and has only been expanding as we have grown the suite of products and services we offer to the underserved in our markets. We are excited about the growth prospects of the segment, as well as the strong sustained ecosystem benefits across both Shopee and the C-Money. To conclude, we believe that we are in a much stronger position now compared to a couple of years ago when the pandemic just started with significantly expanded capabilities, more resources, a proving track record, and a much clearer and a more certain path to achieve our long-term objectives. With Shopee, we continue to capture market share and deepen our strong bonds with sellers and consumers across our markets. We have highly promising growth opportunities in front of us, and we continue to invest prudently and with discipline while driving ever-improving efficiency across the business. With Serena, we are leveraging our strength in content creation and community engagement to ensure the popularity of our platform endures. Even as the global games industry faces headwinds from market reopenings. Concurrently, we are focused on broadening our portfolio of games across different genres. And with C-Money, we are scaling up our third growth engine in a highly disciplined and efficient way, ensuring that we are ideally placed 
to capture the significant growth opportunities ahead of us in this segment. Building on this strong first quarter performance, we will continue to focus on strong execution with balanced growth and efficiency to deliver solid results. With that, I will invite Tony to discuss our financials. Thank you, Forrest, and uh, thanks to everyone for joining the call. We have included detailed financial schedules together with corresponding management analysis in today's press release, and Forrest has discussed some of our financial highlights. So I will focus my comments on the other relevant metrics. For C overall, total gap revenue increased 64% year on year to $2.9 billion. This was mainly driven by the growing adoption of products and services across our e-commerce and digital financial services businesses as we continue to leverage the synergies across our various platforms. On e-commerce, our first quarter gap revenue of $1.5 billion included gap marketplace revenue of $1.3 billion, up 75% year on year, and gap product revenue of $0.3 billion, up 27% year on year. E-commerce adjusted EBITDA loss was $743 million as we continued to deepen e-commerce penetration in our core markets and also gain positive traction in newer markets. Digital entertainment bookings were $0.8 billion, compared to $1.1 billion for the first quarter of 2021. GAF revenue was up 45% year-on-year to $1.1 billion. The increase in GAF revenue was primarily due to recognition of accumulated deferred revenue from previous quarters. Digital entertainment adjusted EBITDA was $431 million, compared to $717 million for the first quarter of 2021. Digital financial services gap revenue was $236 million, an increase of 360% year-on-year from $51 million in the first quarter of 2021. The growth was primarily due to the growing adoption of our financial products and services. Adjusted EBITDA loss was $125 million as we continued our efforts to drive mobile wallet adoption. Returning to our consolidated numbers, we recognized a net non-operating loss of $6 million in the first quarter of 2022 compared to a net non-operating loss of $23 million in the first quarter of 2021. We had a net income tax expense of $82 million in the first quarter of 2022, which was primarily due to corporate income tax and withholding tax recognized in our digital entertainment business. As a result, net loss excluding share-based compensation was $445 million in the first quarter of 2022 as compared to $320 million for the same period in 2021. Net cash used in investing activities amounted to $1.1 billion for the first quarter of 2022. This was primarily attributable to an increase in loans and receivables of $410 million to support the growth of digital financial service businesses, as well as net placement of $333 million into time deposit and liquid investment products for better cash yield management. At the end of the first quarter of 2022, we had around $8.8 billion of cash, cash equivalent, and short-term investments on our balance sheet. With that, let me turn the call to Minju. Thank you, Forrest and Tony. We are now ready to open the call for questions. The question will be addressed by Forrest, Tony, and Yanjie. Operator? Thank you. We will now begin the question and answer session. To ask a question, you may press star then one on your touchtone phone. If you're using a speakerphone, please pick up your handset before pressing the keys. To withdraw your question, please press star then two. In the interest of time, we will take a maximum of two questions at a time from each caller. If you wish to ask more questions, please request to join the question queue again after your first questions have been addressed. At this time, we'll pause momentarily to assemble our roster. Our first question comes from Alicia Yap from Citigroup. Please go ahead. 
Um, thank you. Um, good, good evening, management. Thanks for taking my questions. I have two questions. Um, the first one is um, in light of the various city under the lockdown condition in China, um, can management share any impact uh, from the lockdown in China for your cross-border business? Uh, is that one of the reasons that caused you to widen your e-commerce guidance? Uh, besides that, any other macro conditions that prompt you uh, to become a bit more cautious for your shopping business? Uh, the second question is on your gaming business. Um, management mentioned on the prepare remark um, there's some improvement in the user engagement in Free Fire. Um, can you share which countries that you are actually seeing uh, the improvement user trend? Do you think these user trends uh, metrics could further improve, or you think this is more or less uh, you know to stabilizing the user uh, user metrics? Uh, any updates on new games in the pipeline um, that you can share? Thank you. Thank you, Alicia. Uh, regarding the first question uh, on CB, uh, so far we haven't seen major impact, and uh, cross-border is also uh, not a very significant part of our business. Our business is uh, primarily local to local, um, and uh, the reason to broaden the, the guidance range for Shopee, uh, as we shared uh, in the earnings, that uh, we see uh, macro trends uh, such as uh, uh, increasing inflation, uh, increasing uh, some disruptions in the supply chain, and also uh, rising interest rates um, across uh, various markets and, and, the, and the world. Yeah, I think we want to be prudent uh, in looking at it. Uh, but also as shared, uh, we still think the original uh, guidance is achievable for us. Um, uh, however, given the uncertainties, uh, we do want to uh, be able to uh, manage the situation closely and uh, and also track the, the market dynamics more closely uh, as we progress. Uh, so while there are challenges, we also uh, see some bright spots, in particular in our region. For example, um, most of our markets so far have uh, emerged uh, relatively resilient uh, out of COVID, um, and uh, inflation uh, in, in many of the markets are still uh, relatively in check. And also, uh, some of the markets are net exporters of uh, commodities and uh, uh, or have been uh, benefited from the uh, shift in global supply chain uh, in, in terms of uh, investment, foreign direct investment in manufacturing, uh, et cetera. So relatively speaking, we think there are, while there are challenges and uncertainties, there are also opportunities uh, in the region that we could look to capture. Uh, again, I, I think the uh, key is just like uh, when we entered COVID, uh, there are huge uncertainties and challenges, um, but in the end, we emerge as a much bigger and stronger uh, business, much more diversified and close to approaching long-term profitable growth in our key markets. Uh, so all these helped us a lot uh, in managing and navigating uh, the new challenges and uncertainties that might face us. And as a business, I think we continue to focus on being humble, agile, and pragmatic, and, uh, and focus on strong execution. I think we'll almost, uh, our track record shows that we almost uh, excel uh, even more uh, clearly in, in tough situations. And I think we're also in a, a relatively stronger position compared to many of our peers in navigating that. So in terms of the uh, game business, uh, we, we, we see that uh, they're close to the end of the quarter. Uh, there's some um, uh, stabilization in the uh, user trends uh, in Southeast Asia and uh, some other parts of the world. Uh, however, this remains to be seen uh, in terms of the long-term trends uh, post-COVID and still uh, early stage. Uh, so we want to caution this is uh, some preliminary uh, uh, signs. However, I think we'll continue to make efforts uh, in terms of deepening user engagement, um, and therefore we also uh, shared and put things in perspective uh, and in sharing our uh, two-year CAGR uh, to show that um, the significant uh, user base that we gained uh, during the, the COVID, uh, for some of them we have been able to retain, and we continue to make effort to retain uh, more of those. 
uh, as we uh, continue to build our game into a long-term platform, and we are very um, focused on uh, the longevity of the promoting the longevity of uh, Free Fire as uh, increasing a game platform by introducing more diversified content and game modes uh, and um, types of play, and including UGC tools. Uh, into the game. At the same time, also trying to uh, further to diversify our game pipeline, uh, including uh, uh, publishing games in more markets, such as, uh, um, as far as mentioned, uh, uh, Moonlight Blade uh, uh, to be offered in Thailand shortly. Uh, so that has been our uh, effort, uh, ongoing effort on the game side as well. Our next question comes from Pang Vit from Goldman Sachs. Please go ahead. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Uh, two questions for me here. Can we go back to the guidance again? Uh, maybe can you also uh, walk us through the rationale behind it in terms of like, is it largely due to lowering down the GMV assumptions, or these also have taken into account like lowering down the take rate assumption as well? And that means with this new guidance, what is the implied GMV growth expectation that we can think of? And what should we think of the sequential quarterly trend going forward as well? That's question number one. Uh, and secondly, is in terms of cash flow and the unit economy, it has improved nicely in first quarter. We see healthy improvement of take rate as well. Can you also walk us through the steps that you have taken to achieve this? Is it mainly through this higher take rate or lower subsidies? And how should we think about balancing between growth and profitability, especially in ASEAN, with the macro uncertainty in mind? Also, could we also have a better understanding on how your headquarter costs will train going forward after that's already rising quite significantly in the quarter? Thank you. Thank you, Pen. Uh, in terms of the uh, Shopee guidance, uh, I think as I shared just now, uh, we're uh, not, necessarily, not necessarily lowering it. We're widening the range. Uh, we still think the original guidance is potentially achievable uh, for us. But given the uh, economic uh, uh, trends, we want to be cautious and also um, uh, face, as we face uncertainties, we do want to uh, preserve our maximum uh, flexibility in managing our business in line with underlying market dynamics. Uh, that could be a, a basic a combination of all things in terms of uh, underlying volume growth and commercialization. Uh, we don't specifically guide on GMV and take rate, uh, but overall, you know, if you look at uh, overall uh, gap, gap revenue trends, um, even at the wider range, it's still growing at more than 70 percent uh, year on year, uh, which is, uh, I, I believe, uh, quite high compared to. Um, global industry peers uh, and, and the peers in our markets. So again, I, I think this is something that uh, we're giving in abundance of caution. And in regarding the uh, unit economics improvement, uh, I think this is uh, uh, both in terms of uh, uh, better commercialization as well as efficiency gain on the cost sites uh, as we scale and further strengthen our market leadership. Uh, as we shared, uh, uh, just now, uh, you know, in terms of our uh, uh, thinking about unit economics, uh, we think the best way uh, to maximize long-term profitability, uh, scale, and defensibility, and the overall value of our ecosystem to our communities and our stakeholders, including our shareholders, uh, is by growing the order volume and order density and uh, through that, we're able to achieve better unit economics over time with scale. And of course, during the process, we focus very much on the efficiency of our investment um, by effectively capturing users um, through various social entertainment uh, tools and marketplaces, assortment, better services, etc. Uh, effectively convert them, retain them, and make, improve the frequency, purchase frequency over time uh, so that we can maximize uh, the return on our investment uh, in growing and scaling the business with increasing efficiency. And eventually, if we're able to uh, break even and enjoy long-term profitable growth at 
relatively low order value uh, in terms of average basket size. That makes the platform highly defensible and able to address the largest range of consumers and the largest range of categories of goods. That also allows us to effectively cross-sell many different products and services. That makes the, the platform highly efficient and also improves profitability down the road. That also allow us, so far, has allowed us to, to build the largest consumer internet ecosystem in Southeast Asia and Taiwan, and also approaching a stage of long-term profitable growth. Uh, so this is basically the, the, the consistent uh, approach that we have been executing towards and we have been explaining to the market about. Again, if you'd like to uh, answer. Of, uh, sorry, regarding the uh, H2 cost trend going forward, uh, as we shared in the earnings, that uh, 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 in terms of the most recent quarter, uh, HQ costs uh, contributed to about half of the uh, increase in the EBITDA uh, loss in Shopee, and uh, most of that is R&D headcount driven. Uh, as we also previously shared, uh, that we focus on uh, building our technology capability and uh, our product suites uh, to offer more services and products and more efficiently and effectively uh, to our large communities of users. Uh, we think in the long run, this will turn into a very strong competitive edge uh, for us and, and also um, it makes the platform even more efficient in serving the users, in catering to their needs, and offering more products and services to them. Uh, so that is a long-term investment objective. However, uh, again, as we shared, we'll continue to be very uh, focused and uh, on efficiency and being highly pragmatic as we um, observe the market trends and dynamics and measured in our investment uh, to make sure we, we focus on long-term balanced growth. Again, if you have a question, please press star, then one. Our next question comes from Payush Chowdhury from HSBC Singapore. Please go ahead. Hi. Um, good evening uh, to the management, and thanks for the opportunity. Two questions. Firstly, in the gaming business, um, can you talk about uh, progress to expand your portfolio of self-developed games? Um, and we we noted that your game developer team uh, has, in-house game developer team has expanded to more than 2,000. Could you tell how many developers are engaged on, on Free Fire and Free Fire Max? And second question for Shopee, um, can you talk a little bit about uh, you know this improvement on EBITDA loss per order quarter on quarter? Is company cautiously, consciously kind of weeding out non-profitable orders, or reducing investment in new market, or or you know this is kind of more a scale effect? And uh, housekeeping on Brazil number of orders and ULG revenue. Um, thank you. Yeah. So regarding the uh, self development pipeline. Um, uh, as we uh, uh, shared before, we always uh, have different types of games um, at different stages of testing. Uh, some are uh, being tested anonymously uh, in various markets, not under the Garena name to avoid the, the halo effect of the Garena brand to give us better data. And uh, some at, at uh, earlier uh, closed uh, beta testing stage uh, within a small circle of selected uh, users, and some at an earlier, even earlier stage of being, uh, the, you know, the, still within the, the in-house testing stage. Uh, so at any point of time, we do have things uh, being tested, and uh, as we uh, grow the, the self-development pipeline, um, uh, as usual, we don't announce the game until we formally uh, launch it, uh, public it in the market uh, under the Garena uh, name. Um, but however, this has been a focus of the development team, um, and uh, uh, I think we have about uh, half of our team uh, focused on uh, new games uh, at different stages, uh, while uh, the rest are still continue to focus on putting more content and uh, and also um, 
uh, uh, game modes and uh, UGC tools into Free Fire and uh, Free Fire Max. Uh, again, this is a highly dynamic process. Uh, uh, we can any, any time we might adjust uh, the, the team setup and uh, uh, allocation of uh, human and other resources, uh, depending on uh, the, the demands and needs of our uh, game uh, game content uh, pipeline as well as our user communities. Uh, in terms of the uh, EBITDA last quarter, uh, we're not. Uh, this is not driven by um, uh, cutting uh, loss making, so-called loss making orders. Uh, if you look at uh, our uh, basket size, has been relatively stable uh, quarter on quarter, and our uh, in terms of composition of our categories, have been relatively stable as well. And uh, uh, overall, it's been fairly balanced growth across all categories of consumption and uh, uh, across uh, uh, different types of uh, orders. Um, now, we do see increasing uh, orders uh, coming from the mall side, which is also a uh, positive sign as we uh, have more uh, brands, uh, global, including some of the global brands we mentioned, like Kiehl's, Kate Spade, uh, 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 joining our platform, and but at the same time, and, and contributing more to our GMV. Um, but at the same time, I think that, uh, the 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 bigger picture is that uh, as our uh, the largest uh, marketplace uh, uh, in in our region, and uh, I think overall composition of the categories generally reflect uh, the the broadest communities we are serving. And this is also uh, not driven by uh, market exits uh, primarily either. Uh, as uh, the, those are very nascent uh, stage, the, the, the market that we exited uh, anyway didn't contribute uh, too significantly to the cost side either. The next question. And in terms of uh, Brazil, uh, we we looked, we did uh, provide our uh, EBITDA loss per order um, uh, as well, and uh, as we understand the market. Uh, also very focused on understanding uh, how the efficiency gain uh, is progressing uh, in Brazil. Uh, in terms of overall growth, it, it remains to, to be very robust. Um, uh, you know, we, our uh, order growth continues to be uh, a, a very high th triple digit, uh, close to 200% year on year. Uh, so it's uh, continued to be very high growth rate. And uh, at the same time, uh, we are also very pleased to, to um, uh, sh share that uh, uh, not only were the number one in downloads and total time spent, uh, most recently we were also ranked number one in monthly active uh, user um, uh, for March and April uh, by uh, data.ai, and uh, that shows that uh, we are fast uh, closing and uh, increasingly becoming a, a, a market leader in terms of uh, user base uh, and uh, also in terms of uh, orders uh, in a market that we entered just uh, two years ago uh, while continuing to enjoy efficiency gain in the market. The next question comes from John Choi from Daiwa. Please go ahead. Um, well, good evening. Thank you for um, taking my question. I have two questions. So first of all, on your digital finance services, um, you know, it's very strong growth. Uh, can management provide some color? I mean, you did say that Indonesia, you guys have 30% of the very active users use multiple products. Um, you know, folks, so in terms of a profitability or let's say user engagement and economics, can you kind of share how Indonesia stands out and how this will, um, you know, how, how this could be um, uh, extrapolated to other markets? Um, the second question is on Shopee. Um, I think you just mentioned um, you know, Brazil has been seeing very strong um, growth, uh, like close to 200%. But if you look into, like, you know, actual user engagement on the categories or the actual products, um, you know, that, you know, the consumers are purchasing, how does this, um, you know, compare to our South, Southeast Asia or Taiwan? And, you know, what do you think, you know, you, have, you guys have to invest more in Brazil or South, Latin America? Thank you. Thank you, John. Uh, in Indonesia, uh, yes, you're right that uh, our C money uh, uh, business has grown uh, well, and uh, and we also offered uh, the most uh, comprehensive uh, suite of products uh, in the market, uh, and uh, which is also the the largest market in, uh, in Southeast Asia and Taiwan. Um, and uh, 
so we saw very strong traction and uh, strong uh, synergies uh, with our Shopee ecosystem uh, in growing the business, both in scale, commercialization, and also, uh, as we shared before, we believe it will be a, a cash flow, uh, will contribute positive cash flow to the group business uh, the, uh, in, in the uh, short to medium term. Um, and in other markets, we are also uh, rolling out uh, an increasing number of uh, uh, C-Money products, uh, including, you know, uh, continue to strengthen our market leadership on the e-wallet side and the leverage in that uh, offer more products across credit uh, to both the consumers and our SME merchants, um, and uh, also the insurance product, intratech products, and uh, uh, potentially down the road, uh, wealth management products, of course, in collaboration uh, with financial institutions. Uh, and uh, our digital banking products also being rolled out, uh, uh, not only in Indonesia, but as uh, we shared before, we uh, we have uh, obtained uh, also a license more recently uh, in Singapore, the Philippines, uh, and uh, now in Malaysia. Uh, so we will be also looking to serve the uh, large uh, base of uh, communities uh, in various countries. Um, so we do believe this, uh, there is a very significant opportunity to be captured and uh, our ability uh, to uh, leverage, uh, you know, our large uh, consumer internet ecosystem, our understanding, deep understanding of the user base and uh, our easy access to them and uh, ability to serve them with uh, technologies uh, who are underserved uh, because of the uh, limitation of physical infrastructure and other reasons. Um, so this is uh, the significant and highly profitable opportunity that we are looking at, and uh, we'll continue to manage the, the growth of the sea money business uh, uh, across uh, various regions uh, uh, the, over time. And uh, in terms of uh, our Brazil business, uh, the categories that uh, uh, we are focused on uh, for uh, for the goods sold uh, on the platform by our uh, the local Brazilian SME uh, merchants are uh, largely similar to those we have in Southeast Asia, and also the basket size so far is uh, quite uh, similar uh, uh, in line with the, the group average basket size. So we continue also to target uh, the underserved mass market in Brazil as we gain efficiency. Uh, in terms of the areas of investment, I think generally also similar uh, to how we uh, scaled our business in Southeast Asia and Taiwan. Uh, we invested in user growth, uh, investing in building the platform and uh, a broader range of uh, uh, services and offerings to our users, and at the same time uh, continue to improve the user experience through integrated uh, uh, infrastructure, logistics, as well as payments. Uh, if you know that uh, we previously also announced that we recently obtained um, a financial institution license uh, in Brazil uh, to allow us to better serve our uh, users uh, in terms of uh, e-wallet and e-payment site. Uh, so I think this is something that's uh, very similar uh, to what we have done in Southeast Asia and Taiwan before uh, seven times. Uh, so we are uh, replicating that in Brazil. Of course, each market that we entered into, including all the seven markets in Southeast Asia and Taiwan, are highly uh, uh, distinct and um, require deep localization uh, in approaches, execution, and, uh, and also the management of the business uh, down to uh, every level of detail. And that is where uh, I think we excel in managing um, highly diverse markets uh, across uh, different stages of development uh, and uh, uh, across different uh, cultures and regulatory uh, regimes, and this is something that we'll keep doing. Thank you. The next question comes from Chong Xiao from Barclays. Please go ahead. Um, good evening. Thank you very much for taking my questions. Uh, my first question is a follow-up question on your on your guidance and your outlook for your Shopee business. Uh, your GMV growth um, slowed down a bit in December quarter and in the March quarter, uh, largely because of the tough comp last year. I was wondering, um, uh, just for your current outlook, is Q2 sort of the uh, 
potentially the bottom in terms of the uh, the year over year growth uh, for your for your GMV, uh, and then we start to see recovery in Q3, or the the bottom is going to be sometime later uh, this year. Uh, related to that, previously you talked about uh, take rate maybe up a bit less than 200 basis points this year. Um, sorry if I missed you reiterated that earlier, uh, but if you haven't, I was wondering if you have new thoughts about that. My second question is on competition. Um, I was wondering, um, given some of the news reports about TikTok monetizing e-commerce in Southeast Asia, and Tokopedia went public in Indonesia, raised a few billion dollars, are you seeing any changes in the competitive landscape in Southeast Asia plus Taiwan. Um, if you haven't, could you highlight some of the competitive mode you think you have so to keep you in a leading position, if not expand your lead over some of your competitors? Thank you. Thank you, John. Um, regarding the uh, GMV growth rate, uh, uh, we don't provide guidance on that, uh, as, uh, but as you correctly pointed out. Uh, uh, Q1 and Q2 last year uh, were the, at the height of uh, COVID lockdowns in our region, and uh, they also translated into uh, some of the highest uh, growth rates uh, during that time uh, uh, last year. Uh, so we are facing a tougher comp uh, in, in the first half of the year. Uh, and uh, uh, on the other hand, uh, we don't provide specific guidance on, on the numbers uh, on GMV or, or the take rate. Um, and in terms of a competitive landscape, um, it, I think we always uh, uh, take competition very seriously. And uh, uh, but at the same time, uh, I think we uh, we came from uh, uh, for each of our businesses, uh, in, in particular e-commerce, uh, we came from an underdog position. Vis-a-vis uh, -vis very well established uh, incumbents uh, who also uh, much better funded than we were, um, and uh, we rose to the strong market leadership and become uh, multiple times their size uh, over time uh, in our region, and at the same time uh, improving our efficiency and uh, uh, now approaching uh, profitability. Uh, so I think eventually um, it is about our ability to serve our own users and merchants, including our merchants and consumers well, uh, and leave no large segment of our communities and, and consumption categories uh, that could have been served by us unserved. Uh, and this is, we don't see it as a zero-sum game. We see it as a marathon uh, whereby uh, our success is dependent on our ability to execute, continue to pace ourselves well and run well and be ahead of the pack. Uh, so this is our uh, consistent approach on competition. Again, if you have a question, please press star, then one. Our next question comes from Shen Wang Go from CICC. Please go ahead. Hey, hi. Uh, thank you for taking my question. Uh, it's with regards to uh, take rates. Uh, we've noted that, um, you know, um, take rates for commission in marketplaces have actually increased in April and May. Um, is it a reflection of our strength uh, in each country, given that uh, take rates were uh, increasing varying um, levels uh, down, in, down to our Southeast Asia markets? Uh, that's my first question. And the second one is with regards to uh, uh, buy now, pay later. Um, when do we think we'll, we'll be able to replicate the success of uh, buy now pay later uh, 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 in, in in our countries in, in countries operations like uh, Philippines and uh, even Brazil? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Shen Yong. Um, regarding the uh, take rate, uh, uh, I think this again. Um, we've been uh, gradually raising take rate uh, consistently. I think that um, we started uh, introducing uh, take rate across uh, various uh, types of uh, merchants and categories of goods. 
um, uh, many years ago, and uh, were uh, uh, pioneers, uh, in fact, in many of the markets in introducing a take rate and, and gradually increasing, we've been gradually increasing the take rate over time across uh, multiple types of uh, 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 streams of revenue. And uh, as we shared in earnings uh, for the most recent quarter, uh, the, the increase uh, uh, also largely came from um, the high margin take rates in terms of uh, uh, transaction-based fees as well as advertisements. Uh, a, a lot of that is actually um, optional for our merchants. Uh, these involving opt-in programs that the merchants can choose to pay us a high take rate uh, for more and better services and uh, or better deals for their consumers. So eventually, this is the merchants uh, basically investing in their own business uh, on our marketplace to grow their business. And as a result, we benefit from that. Um, so I think eventually this is because our ability uh, to deliver uh, better results, um, more sales volume, and attract more users uh, to the merchants, their business is growing fast. And as a result, they're also um, willing to and happy to invest more in a platform uh, that that allows them to, uh, their business to grow even better and faster on our platform. Uh, in terms of the uh, buy now play later, um, so we will uh, uh, we, we have been introduced seeing the buy now play later programs uh, across uh, various markets, um, uh, and uh, I might also introduce it in in Brazil. Um, that uh, uh, as uh, demanded by our users, uh, we will be uh, uh, also collaborating with uh, other financial institutions uh, to um, to help grow the program. Uh, but we will continue to remain very prudent and uh, uh, to manage a highly sustainable uh, uh, in terms of the sustainable long-term growth of the program. We think it helps. Uh, the growth of e-commerce business, and uh, uh, but at the same time, uh, we are also cautious about uh, extending credit to only whitelisted consumers uh, with whom we can um, have uh, sufficient data, and uh, we continue to focus on improving our underwriting capabilities uh, across the board. Uh, so this has been a uh, something that we focus on uh, in various markets. Due to time constraints, this concludes our question and answer session. I would like to turn the conference back over to Minju Song for any closing remarks. Thank you again for uh, joining the call today. Uh, we look forward to speaking to all of you again uh, next quarter. Thank you. The conference is now concluded. Thank you for attending today's presentation. You may now disconnect. <laughs>